nice to meet you all so. Okay, so I heard that you um, recently had a battle with bronchitis, so can you tell me a little bit about that and why you're in today? Well, a couple of things have happened recently that made me think that I need to seriously think about giving up smoking. Okay, okay, so you've had some, some events that really maybe frightened you and, and, and made you think that smoking might not be right for you right now. Right. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, the, the bronchitis, um, and also I swim, I'm a swimmer, about three times a week, and I've noticed I've, um, sometimes I don't even go in the water because I've experienced some shortness of breath swimming. Um, and then my little grandson um, that I take care of on the weekends was recently hospitalized for an asthma attack. And of course, his physician does not want him around smokers. Mm -hmm. So I would say between, you know, being concerned about my health, the shortness of breath and, and things, and then my grandson's health made me think I'd really better seriously consider giving up smoking. Okay, okay, so you're, you're concerned that the effects of smoking have really um, had an impact on, on your daily life, your physical activity that you enjoy. Um, and you've, you've seen that it could potentially affect your grandson and that, that really scares you because I'm sure you have a really close bond with him. Yeah, I love him to death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me, tell me more about what it is about smoking that, um, that's hard for you to, to give up. Oh boy. <laughs> First of all, I, I think it, uh, it helps with my stress. I find that, you know, it, it kind of calms me and I do probably smoke more when I'm under stress. Um, a lot of it's habit. You know, a lot of times you do it without even thinking about it. I have to admit, I enjoy it. Um, I think it helps keep my weight down. So, you know, those are a lot of reasons it's gonna be difficult for me to give it up. Okay. Okay, so I'm hearing that the stress management is a really big factor for you. You want that immediate sense of calm that you get from cigarettes. Right. And that's really beneficial to you. Right. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that your grandson's health and your own health are really important reasons for you to quit. So can you tell me more about what else is sort of pushing you to consider this? Um, you know, I, I besides you know, my health and my grandson's health, it's getting so expensive. You know, it's it's just, um, it's, you know, five, six dollars a pack. Um, I'm tired of the sticky, smoky odor in my clothes and on my breath and, you know, and, it, and it, you feel almost ostracized by society anymore when anybody sees you smoking. So I guess those would be reasons. Okay, so you're, while there are some benefits to having the cigarettes, you notice that maybe it's, it's affecting your life in a way you're not comfortable with, with the smell and the, you know, you're not able to smoke in as many places as you may once have been able to. Right. So that's hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else um, concerns you about quitting smoking? Do you have any other can you tell me about other fears you have regarding this? I don't want to gain a lot of weight. You know, I do hear these stories about people putting on a ton of weight, 20, 30 pounds. You know, that concerns me. Um, let's see. I mean, I, you know, I'm just afraid of what I'm going to do with myself during those times that, you know, I get urges to smoke. Um, I'm afraid of the irritability. Oh my gosh, you just. You're so irritable when you, you know, you are craving that cigarette and you're trying to not smoke, and mm -hmm. that's a big one for me, the irritability. Okay, so those are important things that if we are to talk about how you would go about quitting smoking, we can talk about ways you could um, manage the, the cravings and also help yourself maintain your weight and not, not get, um, not gain weight from, from making this change. Right, yeah. Okay, so we can talk about that later. Um, 
I'm going to ask you some questions just to get a better sense of um, how you see quitting smoking fitting into your life. So we have this um, rating scale here. So on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being not important at all, 10 being extremely important, how important is it for you to quit smoking? How important is it for you to quit smoking? How important? Yeah. Um, I would say seven or eight, pretty pretty important. Okay, okay. So that's, it, it's a really high priority for you, I'm hearing. I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, why, why not the lower? Why not a two or a three? Well, because uh, this shortness of breath I've been experiencing and my grandson, I mean, those are the two big reasons why I feel that it's more important than ever to nip it in the bud now. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially my little grandson, that just was a real wake up call for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's only getting older and you want, it sounds like you want to help him be the best and healthiest um, boy he can be. Well, and set a good example, be a good mm -hmm. role model for him also. Absolutely, absolutely. That's I can I can tell that your your caring for him is something that's really important as yeah. you consider this right behavior. Okay, so let's look back at the scale again. And so the same scale, zero to ten. How confident are you that you can make this change and quit smoking? Uh, <laughs> well, if I'm being truthful, mm -hmm. I would say probably a three or four. Okay, so not very confident. Mm -hmm. Okay, why, why a three or a four? Why not higher, like, your the importance? Oh, because I've tried before and failed miserably every time. Um, you know, I started smoking again, so I felt like a failure. Okay. So I guess that would be my main reason for not being real confident in being able to do this. Mm -hmm. So you've quit several times before. So although right now they haven't led to you being smoke-free, you have had some success. Making making quite attempts. Well, I mean, yeah, I, uh, the longest I was off them was about ten days, so I I guess I would consider that a little success anyway. Absolutely, you got through some of the hardest um, parts of the withdrawal. Right. So you really, you really got over the hump a little bit. Right. Okay. Um, in those times, what brought you back to smoking? Irritability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just missed it. I missed, like I said, the habit of it, just ir irritability. Um, I just I just couldn't take the withdrawal symptoms, headaches, some nausea, those kinds of things. Okay, so there, there was nothing that you did to sort of manage the withdrawal. You went back to cigarettes to, to manage those cravings. Right. Okay. Okay, and no, no use of nicotine replacement therapy or... Um, I not the first two attempts. I've tried three times altogether. The first okay. two attempts were cold turkey. Mm -hmm. The last attempt, I did try some of that Nicorette gum, mm -hmm. um, and that was the attempt I was off the longest for okay. about ten days. Um, but I hated the taste of the gum. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, I, I was experiencing all the same kinds of things, so I started smoking again. Okay. Okay. So we. Like I mentioned earlier, we can talk more about um, finding a nicotine replacement therapy or other product that would be right for you to help you manage those cravings okay. if we decide to figure out how you would quit. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, you said three or four for your confidence. Mm -hmm. What would it take to get you higher to, let's say, a nine? How, how to go about it this time differently? Um, you know, I, I guess I need to educate myself on, I know that there's new smoking cessation aids. I, I read in newspapers and magazines, I see this drug called Chantix. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the fact that, you know, maybe more education and maybe someone to help me, mm -hmm. um, I think is gonna, would raise my confidence level. Okay. Rather than going in alone again and quitting cold turkey, because that just didn't work for me. Absolutely. You want a team to sort of help you and help you get through this because it's a hard thing. You've experienced how hard it can be to get through that first period of, right. of withdrawal. Oh, yeah, it's awful. Okay. Well, we can certainly figure out a way to make sure you have everything you need set up if we're going to um, talk about making this quit. Oh, you. Good. I hope so. <laughs> I need <laughs> help. Okay. Well, that's what we're here for. Good. So, Okay, I have another little question here. Okay, for you. So
So looking at this list, pick uh, three or four values, traits, or characteristics that are on here that are really important to you. Oh, boy, lots of them. Um, number one, most definitely, good parent, good grandparent. Mm -hmm. I'll add the grandparent part of it. Um, I'd like to be feel more competent. Um, gosh, so many of them. In control, I, I would say, would be another important thing, since obviously I have not been in control of my smoking cessation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being... Um, a, a role model like you mentioned and, and setting that example for how to live a healthy life is important for you, for your children and your grandchildren. Right. And also the the control that you have. You you don't want to feel like cigarettes are are you you don't want to feel like you're relying on cigarettes to get you through life. That they're controlling me. Mm -hmm. You get it. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. you do. You feel like a failure. You, you think you know I'm a pretty think of myself as a pretty competent person. I mean, uh, you know, I set goals at work, I achieve my goals, but this is one area of my life I just can't seem to master smoking cessation of it. bugs me because I, I think of myself um, in all other aspects of life as a pretty much competent person and in control. Right. And, and so it really, it really bothers me that I can't get a handle on this. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's really interesting. You you said you are really good at being on top of things and setting goals and achieving them in your work life, and yet this this nicotine is it has a hold on you, and you want to make sure that you can get a hold of it. You don't want it to get you down. Right, right. I want to feel as competent in that area of my life as I do in in other areas. Well, I think we can think about ways to transfer that confidence you have in everywhere else in your life to, to apply to, and apply it to the smoking. I hope so. Yeah. You definitely, it sounds like you have the strength and, and the determination. Oh. Well, I'm glad <laughs> you think so. That makes me feel good. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so we talked about how these values sort of relate to your current behavior. How, um, if at all, would, can you give, give me some more um, description of how you would um, if you changed your behavior, how you would better achieve these values and traits that you... Well, boy, if I could lick this this smoking, um, I definitely, first, I would definitely feel like a better parent and grandparent. Role model, I have a 27-year-old daughter, 30-year-old son. They don't smoke yet, mm -hmm. but um, I don't want them to start. And again, I would feel like more in control and, and more confident that I could do this. I could be successful instead of beating myself up all the time that I can't do it. I try, I can't do it. And I guess I've come to the realization that I need help. I can't do this alone. It sounds like ideally you want to be a smoke-free mother, a smoke-free grandmother, a smoke-free um, individual. Right. Okay, so given what we've talked about with your confidence for quitting, the importance of it to you, and these values, where does that leave you in terms of thinking about quitting? Well, I guess I need to um, have some help with setting some goals, coming up with ideas on how mm -hmm. to go about this differently, mm -hmm. you know, being educated on the various cessation aids out there. Certainly. Okay, so what what is your goal in terms of this behavior? Well, I definitely like to be totally smoke-free. Okay. Okay, so you're motivated and determined to cut this out of your life. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so we talked about figuring out some ways to manage the cravings. Right. And to make sure that you're, you're not gaining weight. Right. Um, and, and just learning more about how, how to manage all of that. So you tried the Nicaragua. What other um, ideas do you have about finding something that would help with the cravings? Well, that, I guess that's where I, I do need help. I don't know. You know, I like I, I mean, you'd have to live under a rock to not know the, about the patch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know ab about it. Mm -hmm. I know that it exists. I just don't know how it works. Okay. Um, of course, the gum. Um, but I, I guess it would. You know, I'd have to learn the various aids and which one that I feel would be most conducive to my life and my work environment. Okay. 
Well, if it's okay with you, I can share with you some information about some other um, quick aids. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to hear them, yeah. Okay, so we tried the gum. Um, there's the patch, like you mentioned, put it on your body, and um, it it um, gets nicotine to your to your brain um, through your skin. Um, it has a little bit longer of a time to get the nicotine into your body and actually feel the um, the cravings subside. Um, and the gum is more immediate. There's also a lozenge and an inhaler, which is sort of like a little puffer, and you sort of stuck on it like a straw, and it gets the nicotine in through the lining of your mouth. Mm. And and it sort of mimics the hand to mouth motion if that's something that sounds appealing to you. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, prescription medications, which if you're interested, we can talk to your doctor about getting a prescription written. Um, there's Chantix, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and that sort of makes the reinforcing effects of nicotine go away. Um, it might not, if you if you were to start smoking again, um, it wouldn't taste good. It would it wouldn't feel good. Oh. Um, and then finally, there's Zyban, and that um, just sort of helps you. It, it subsides the cravings, so you're not feeling so um, irritable and and struck, or, you know craving the cigarette. cigarette. Okay. So, hmm. What of what those things sounds good to you? Well, I, I'm thinking maybe um, the inhaler would not be a good idea because I'm in a lot of meetings. Okay. I guess I like the idea of this Chantix. Mm. Um, if it helps eliminate that craving and it's a pill that I can take that, you know, wouldn't be noticeable, obviously I can yeah. do it before and after meetings. So um, I think that would be probably my choice based on hearing what the other choices are. Okay, so it sounds like having something that's easy to take and that would just really just take care of everything, you wouldn't have to constantly be doing things throughout the day, that is really important. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's, um, let's table that and we, we can figure out how to talk to your doctor about getting a prescription. Okay. Um, now the, the um, weight management. How, how at all would you consider going about making sure that you're not gaining weight as you go through this process? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I guess I need help with that. All right. Well, if it's okay with you, I can, again, share some information. Okay. Um, I know some people, some patients like to go to a support group for quitting. Um, you mentioned you, you do want help. With right. That. So they, in, in so, some support groups, they cover the nutrition and oh. um, they can help you figure out what you can do to make sure that you're you're not gaining too much weight. I'm a firm believer in support groups. I, yeah, I think that might be a good option for me. Okay. Okay. So that is something we can consider. All right. Um, also, just thinking about ways that you can... Um, satisfy your craving for maybe putting something in your mouth without ingesting too many calories. So using carrot sticks or celery sticks, um, cinnamon toothpicks, those are things that have worked for other people too. Okay, good to know. Those are all good ideas. Okay, good. Um, so given given those options of maybe getting extra support and, and doing some basic um, healthy nutrition options for yourself. What what sounds good to you? What sounds reasonable? Um, of those nutrition options? Yeah, or any other. Yeah, I have. think attending these support groups and finding out, you know, what other people mm -hmm. um, have found that has helped them keep from gaining so much weight, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting some good maybe recipes, low calorie recipes, that sort of thing. Certainly, certainly. You also mentioned that you exercise through your swimming. Right. So that's something that can really, really help you make sure that you're managing the weight and also be a stress reliever as you go through that hard part of quitting. Right, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. So do you, can you think about how you might use swimming to help you with the quit or exercise at all? Um, well, you know, if I quit smoking and have a little bit more you know, breath, mm -hmm. um, I might even try to up my swimming instead of three times a week, maybe an extra mm -hmm. time a week. Mm -hmm. So there might be opportunity to have extra time in the pool and 
extra calories that you're burning to help you manage right. that weight. So I don't gain a lot of weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's a that's a great idea. I'm glad you hear that. Um, all right. So I'm gonna just summarize what I've heard so far. Okay. So you had a health experience that was really scary for you and for your grandson, and you're considering that maybe cigarettes aren't an important part of your life given that you want to be a good parent, a good role model for your grandson, and that you are a competent person in all areas of your life. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to let you go ahead and finish your summary. Oh, thank you. Um, and there are some ways that you are thinking about what you could do differently this time to make quitting a long-term thing for you. Right. So you're considering using Chantix. Um, maybe joining a support group, getting some help with the weight management, and and using this exercise that you're already engaged in to help you stay smoke-free. We'll we'll stop there. Hello, you are. (laughs)